The broadcasting of the Sendamiwa murder trial has once again come up a sharp focus after the media was barred from covering the case yesterday. Images of state witness Dumela Mazala were actually accidentally shown on television. The judge then briefly kicked out all journalists out of court uh, in the wake of this incident. Our reporter Linda Mnisi was in court at the time. He joins us now live from outside court this morning. And Linda, take us back to what happened. Well, you'll remember, Ayanda, that during broadcast, especially when uh, court adjourns, either for a break, a tea break, or for the day, what would usually happen? You'd have, um, you know, a, a, a camera tracking the movement of the judge, um, you know, as well as maybe other things in court. And that, that's exactly what happened at the time. And it appears as though uh, while uh, the judge was exiting the court, uh, Dumelo Madala inadvertently stood up and entered the shot uh, that was live and therefore his picture was then broadcast uh, on television. You'll remember that the court had ordered uh, that his face not be shown and that the witness, uh, you know, not be, the witness's face not be broadcast, no pictures allowed uh, in, an, in a bit to protect the, w the witness's identity but also uh, protect him as this, uh, you'll remember, is uh, a high profile case and the issue of safety has been uh, raised on a number of occasions. The judge then ordered that whoever was responsible for that should exit the court or otherwise if we were unable as the media to identify the person behind that then we would all have to leave. At the time investigations around what exactly could have happened uh, were ongoing and therefore uh, the decision hadn't really been discovered or the person behind what had happened uh, you know, hadn't really been discovered. You remember there were conversations about issues of a photoshop because those are uh, also other avenues that were being explored and uh, the tracking of course of when the incident itself happened uh, to therefore to then determine uh, the person behind it. It was uh, at a later stage then discovered but it was too late because then the judge had already ordered that if we can't at that very moment uh, identify this person then uh, media, all media across the board, uh, print, radio as well as television should leave the courtroom and therefore that is why the latter part of the proceedings yesterday were not broadcast. In fact, it's an hour, the last hour of the proceedings after lunch were not broadcast. It sounds like a, an honest mistake, Linda. I wonder if the judge agrees with that and whether or not the media will be allowed to broadcast from today. We'll hear that from the judge today, Ayanda, um, you know, when he enters the court, because you'll remember that uh, he wanted uh, this, the person responsible to be identified. And there was really no ban on the media, but the judge was quite specific in that uh, the person responsible should be the one that excuses themselves. But failing which, every media house that was in court would therefore suffer the consequences. So whether you knew about the incident or not, if the person who was responsible for it was not identified at the time, all media would then have to leave. And that is what exactly happened because at the time investigations were ongoing. And therefore uh, later today we'll hear then, um, you know, what he makes of, um, you know, the submissions um, or the findings of that investigation around who exactly could have uh, you know, been behind this incident. He didn't really ban the media from covering the case going forward. It's expected that today uh, media houses will be back in court uh, to hear exactly what he made of that particular incident. But in as far as an outright ban, there is no such thing that has been ordered by the court. All right. Uh, Linda Misi, thanks very much indeed. Hopefully we'll be able to watch the judge as he gives his reflections around what happened and what the way forward ought to look like in order for us to prevent a repeat of that. Linda Misi, live from the High Court in Pretoria. Thanks very much indeed.